Triple H has had many nicknames and titles throughout his illustrious career. From the game to the cerebral assassin, from the king of kings to executive vice president, Paul Levesque has had many badass and professional monikers throughout his career. One that doesn't get brought up so frequently these days is the Greenwich Blue Blood, which doesn't sound half as cool as the Cerebral Assassin. The Blue Blood wasn't only a nickname, it was the exact character that Paul Levesque would portray upon his debut in the WWF. You would think that the Hunter Hearst Helmsley character was pretty much conceived as a way to instantly stop a superstar's potential growth. But don't get it twisted, pretty much everyone who came into the WWF during the time of Levesque's debut was saddled with a silly gimmick, whether they were in line for a push or simply hired to fill up the undercard. This is the same era that gave us guys like Adam Baum, Rod Radford, Mantar, Double J and Sparky Plug. So yeah, whether you were hot shit in the ring or not, it was irrelevant, you were getting saddled with a dumb gimmick. This video looks at the early days of Triple H in WCW and the WWF, from his debut right up until he became Triple H in D-Generation X. Paul Levesque had gotten himself into WCW when some of his tapes found their way to the desk of Bob Dew, the president of the company. Bob liked Paul's work and he promised that a Mr Eric Bischoff would be giving him a call soon to bring him in to work for the company. It seemed that Terror Rising, the moniker that Paul Levesque was using at the time, was getting a solid push during his initial three months within WCW in 1994, picking up consecutive wins on WCW TV shows such as Saturday Night and Worldwide. Terror Rising was no sledge in the ring either, having trained and worked under Killer Kowalski for two years and already having a string of wins in Kowalski's promotions. Seemingly a young version of Ric Flair, the sky seemed like the limit for this 24 year old who just showed up on WCW TV. His debut match against Keith Cole impressed Eric Bischoff so much that Eric offered him a two year deal, but Paul turned it down for a one year deal, saying to Eric that it will only take him a year to realise if he isn't worth the kind of money he was being offered or if he was worth a whole lot more. A ballsy move for sure. A few months into his WCW run, Ric Flair, who was on the WCW booking committee, told Paul Levesque that he was getting repackaged into a new character. Thanks to his surname being of French origin, Paul Levesque was told to change his name to Jean-Paul Levesque. He was now French and he didn't speak English, according to Rick. When Paul told Rick that he didn't know how to speak any French, Rick said, in that case, he must now speak with broken English. The rest of the character was up to Paul to figure out. Jean-Paul Levesque would end up being an aristocratic Frenchman and you can see here the similarities to the eventual Hunter Hearst Helmsley character that would debut in the WWF very soon afterwards. Although Jean-Paul Levesque was getting a decent push and was getting ready to join forces with Lord Stephen Regal in a regular tag team, Triple H was not overly excited about staying in WCW. He was making decent money and his one year contract was coming up to an end where he would have been in the position to negotiate a better deal. But with WCW cutting down on house shows and Levesque wanting to work as much as possible to gain experience, he decided to reach out to the WWF. Hunter didn't care for money, he wanted the opportunity to work as much as possible. Vince McMahon gave him a job and Paul Levesque's first match in front of a WWF audience would occur on the 25th of April 1995. Hunter Hearst Helmsley's first WWF match was against Sonny Rogers. The WWE nowadays likes you to believe it was against Buck Zumhoff, but the Sonny Rogers match was taped the day before the Zumhoff match. Of note here is that Hunter Hearst Helmsley's finisher initially was the Diamond Cutter. Both the Zumhoff and Rogers matches can be found on YouTube. So let's talk about this Hunter Hearst Helmsley character. It's been said that the Blue Blood from Greenwich, Connecticut was a gimmick made up by Vince McMahon to poke fun at his snobby neighbours. In his initial TV vignettes that aired before his debut, anyone who watched WCW could tell that the French aristocrat character of Jean-Paul Levesque wasn't really too far removed from Hunter Hearst Helmsley, with the obvious exception being the accent. It's been reported over and over again that the Greenwich Blue Blood was designed to annoy Vince's neighbours, but in researching this, 
I have struggled to find exactly where that information has originally came from. Sure as hell, it makes sense, but it's one of these things that keeps getting reported over and over again without any kind of original source. I know guys like Bruce Pritchard have talked about it too over the years, but I'm interested to know exactly where this information came from, so if any guys watching this can provide the original source and not a clickbait website, please leave a comment and let me know. So anyway, Vince McMahon promised Paul Levesque that he would work a ton in the WWF, something Paul was afraid would not happen in WCW due to the cutting down of house shows. And boy, Triple H got a ton of work. Over 90 matches are recorded for Triple H from his WWF debut in April 95, right up until the end of the year. Hunter was brought into the company with a decent push, and he defeated those put in front of him with ease, albeit these were job guys. But even on house shows in 1995, Hunter was cleaning house with win after win. Approaching the end of 1995, however, the huge TV push had stalled. In October that year, Hunter found himself feuding with Henry O. Godwin, which led to a string of house show matches where Triple H would be on the receiving end of a bucket of slop. The feud culminated in an Arkansas hog pen match at In Your House 5, which saw Hunter getting thrown into a hog pen that was set up at ringside. Not a highlight in the career of the King of Kings. Most people also incorrectly think that Hunter lost this match, but he actually got Henry O. Godwin into the hog pen first. Nineteen ninety six would be a trying year for Hunter Hearst Helmsley. He picked up a win against Duke the Dumpster Drosy at In Your House 6 and had a decent match against Bret Hart the following night on Raw, but he was selected to be on the receiving end of an Ultimate Warrior squash match at WrestleMania 12, which was also Paul Levesque's first ever WrestleMania. More can be learned about this in my Ultimate Warrior 1996 video. After the Warrior match, a feud was started with the debuting Mark Merrow, who took Hunter's valet Sable away from him. Hunter began picking up wins again while on tour after WrestleMania, and it seemed like the Warrior match was just a blip in the ongoing rise of Hunter Hearst Helmsley. On May 19th, 1996 though, the infamous Curtain Call incident happened, which hurt Hunter's professional standing more than anyone else's. I don't feel I need to go into the details of the Curtain Call here in this video because God knows enough YouTube channels have covered it already. Let me summarise though, Hunter was friends with Shawn Michaels, Diesel, Razor Ramon and the 123 Kid. Backstage in the WWF, the group collectively were known as the Click, and they had a certain amount of backstage stroke within the company. Well, at least Shawn, Razor and Diesel did. Anyway, Razor and Diesel were leaving to go to WCW, and on May 19th, 1996, in Madison Square Garden, Shawn was working against Diesel and Razor was working against Hunter. This was the Click's last night together in Madison Square Garden, so after the Shawn vs Diesel match, Razor and Hunter made their way to the ring and hugged it out in front of all the fans. Nothing like this was really done back then, as good guys had to remain good guys and bad guys had to remain bad guys. But here were good guys and bad guys all hugging in the ring, essentially breaking kayfabe. Apparently Vince gave the okay for this to happen, but after getting a shitload of heat, Vince decided he had to punish the click. Razor and Diesel were leaving, so he couldn't punish those guys. Sean was the world champion and the company's golden boy, so he was immune. That left Hunter Hearst Helmsley, who ended up taking the punishment. He was jobbed out for months afterwards, practically losing week after week to Mark Marrow for around four months. He would then lose TV matches to the likes of Freddie Joe Floyd, only to resume jobbing on house shows to Jake Roberts and Steve Austin for another few months. From May to October, Triple H jobbed over and over and over again, a far cry from becoming the king of the ring and working a program with Shawn Michaels, two things that Hunter Hearst Helmsley was scheduled to do in 1996. There was a light at the end of the tunnel though in the middle of October. One night after having an incredibly good opening match against Stone Cold Steve Austin at In Your House Buried Alive, Hunter won the Intercontinental title with the help of his new heater, Mr. Perfect. The win was out of nowhere, as Hunter wasn't really getting featured on TV up until this point. I like to think that the Steve Austin match at Buried Alive helped his chances here, it really was that good. It's fun to go back and watch this also, knowing both these men would become wrestling megastars but here they are, trying to climb their way up the WWF ladder. 
I always try to point out a match to watch in these videos and I definitely think you should look up Steve Austin vs Hunter Hearst Helmsley at Buried Alive. Mr. Perfect disappeared from the WWF to join WCW and Hunter was stuck with a new heater. Curtis Hughes was brought in and paired up with Hunter but it didn't work at all. These two were a mismatch, something that even Vince McMahon noticed and Hughes was swiftly removed from Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Hunter went on to drop the Intercontinental title to Rocky Maivia but got a rematch for the gold at In Your House Final Four. When Goldust came out to distract Hunter, the tables got turned when Marlena, Goldust's manager, was choked out by a fan at ringside. This turned out to be China, Hunter's new bodyguard. Hunter and Shawn Michaels had been pitching China to Vince McMahon for months with no success, but when Vince learned that China could possibly be in talks with WCW, he gave her the green light and she was hired as Hunter's new bodyguard. The duo of Hunter and China were very effective, with China's presence adding a new layer to the presentation of Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Hunter and China walked into WrestleMania 13 and defeated Goldust. Around this time also, Hunter began dropping the whole blue blood gimmick. Hunter was now coming across as a more vicious ring technician who would call upon China when things got a bit too rough. It worked really really well. No better is this demonstrated than at the 1997 King of the Ring where Hunter won the tournament after a hard fought final match with Mankind. After getting his 1996 King of the Ring victory taken away from him as a punishment, Hunter had hung in there when times were tough and he came out a better performer one year later. Like he had done in 1996 during his match with Shawn Michaels at In Your House Mind Games, Mankind was able to show a more violent side to Hunter Hearst Helmsley that done nothing but make him look better in the ring. Hunter and Mankind continued to feud in the months following the King of the Ring, leading to a great 15 minute steel cage match at SummerSlam 1997, which Mankind won. Also at SummerSlam, Shawn Michaels effectively turned heel after blasting The Undertaker with a steel chair, costing him the WWF Championship in a match that Shawn also refereed. The stars had aligned, with Shawn now being a bad guy, Hunter and Shawn, two backstage friends, could now come together and form a heel tag team. Teaming up with Shawn Michaels, one of the biggest names in the WWF in late 1997, done nothing but elevate Hunter Hearst Helmsley to the next level. On the August 18th edition of Raw, Shawn Michaels and Hunter Hearst Helmsley tagged up and brutalised The Undertaker. Shawn would then begin referring to Hunter as Triple H, a name that would end up sticking with him in the months that followed.